Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for Negation. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. By the end of this video, you should be able to create the negation of an English statement. You should be able to formally negate a mathematical statement involving AND, NOT, and IF THEN. You should be able to formally negate a mathematical statement involving multiple quantifiers. Our motivation is that taking the negation of a mathematical statement is the formal way of taking its opposite. And its opposite is not well-defined, it's, it's vague, imprecise, but we're going to come up with formal ways of doing that. This will allow us to transfer from a statement to its opposite and back again. While we proceed through these slides and through this video, um, it's useful for your intuition um, to think about if someone said a statement R to you, what would you need to know to make sure that they're lying? So this isn't what we'll use for the rest of playing around with negation, but for coming up for intuition, it's very helpful. Think about what would you need to know to make sure that they're lying to you? Let's start with the negations of and and or. Consider the statement P is I am tall and Q is I play basketball. If someone says to you P and Q, I am tall and I play basketball, the negation of this will be either not P or not Q. So I am short or I don't play basketball. Um, in other words, if someone said to you I am tall and I play basketball, uh, then the way you would know that they're lying is either they're short or they don't play basketball. If they do one of the two or both, that's fine. Their original statement is, um, uh, is fine. Now, if someone says to you, I am tall or I play basketball, well, how would you know that they're lying? You'd have to know that both of the things were false you'd have to have that they are short and they don't play basketball. Using this lens of when are they lying can help you come up with the negations. So these two things are actually called De Morgan's laws. The negation of P and Q becomes not P or not Q. And the negation of an or statement becomes the and of the two negations. How would you prove that these two things are logically equivalent? Or rather, how would you prove that the first two are logically equivalent? What's the technique that we use for that? We would use a truth table. So as an exercise, you should prove that these things are logically equivalent using a truth table. Here's an exercise for you using ands and ors. In the first one, express this inequality using ands and ors, and in the second one, negate it and use De Morgan's laws. So take a moment to do that now. For the first one, this is actually two separate conditions. It's saying that zero is greater or equal to zero, sorry, x is greater or equal to zero, and it's saying that x is less than one. Now, how do you negate an AND statement? You use De Morgan's law and turn them into ORs. So if we negate an AND statement, this is, well, negating the AND, then the AND turns into an OR, and you negate each of the parts separately. What's the negation of x is greater or equal to zero? It's x is less than zero. Similarly, what's the negation of x less than 1? It's 1 less than or equal to x. So let's think about this um, in a less formal way without the negations. If someone said to you, x is between 0 and 1, but not 0, or sorry, but it could be 0, what are the, what's the negation of that? What, what are the other things that could happen? Well, the negation would be it's either less than 0 or it's 1 or bigger. So that's a more intuitive way of understanding. 
And here's the more formal step-by-step -step symbolic way of understanding. You can use these together. Now we move on to the negation of implications. Let's consider the statement, if I get an A in my intro to proofs course, and the statement Q, I, I pass my intro to proofs course. If someone told you P implies Q, how would you know that they're lying? Under what circumstances would they be lying? So if someone says P implies Q, if you get an A in your course, then you'll pass it. The only time that you would be upset is if P was true, but Q was not true. So the negation is P and not Q. You got an A, but you didn't pass. Then you would be rightfully angry and you would send angry emails to the instructor. This tells us how to negate an implication. The negation of P implies Q is P and not Q. How would you prove that these two things are logically equivalent? What technique would you use? You would use a, proof ta a truth table. As an exercise, you should do that. Now we move on to the negation of universal quantifiers. Consider the example, consider the statement, every person in this course was born in Toronto. Well, you can think about whether that's true or not. Think about how you would show that that's true, or if you think it's false, how would you show that it's false? What's the negation of this sentence? The negation is, well, there is a person in the course who was born somewhere other than Toronto. In fact, this negation is true because I was not born in Toronto. This tells us how to negate universal quantifiers. So if you have a statement of the form, for every x in the set A, p of x is true, and you're trying to negate that, well, the way you negate it is by showing there exists an x in A that doesn't have the property. One way to think of this is you can pull the negation through, and the negation turns the for all into a there exists. It doesn't touch the set A at all. Let's capture this in a proof technique. If you're trying to prove some statement of the form for all x in a p of x, then what you have to do is you have to show that every x in a has the property p of x. That's what it means to prove a for all statement. One note, since this seems to be a common misunderstanding for students, is that no, one example is not enough to prove a universal statement. If you're trying to prove that every math instructor has a PhD, it's not enough to find one person who has a PhD. You have to show it about every person. This also gives us a way to prove negations of universal quantifiers. So if you're trying to prove that a universal statement is not true, so you're trying to prove that the negation of a universal statement is true, you need to find only one example of an x in that set A that does not have the property p of x. This x is called a counterexample. So in our original statement, we said every person in this course is born in Toronto, and we tried to prove the negation, which is that there is a person in the course who wasn't born in Toronto, and a counterexample would be me. I'm an example of a person who is in the course, but was not born in Toronto. Next, we'll talk about negations of existential quantifiers. Consider the statement, there is a person in the course who is over 150 years old. Do you think that's true? What would the negation of this be? The negation is every person in the course is under or maybe exactly 150 years old. 
in past years when I've taught this, I haven't put the or exactly 150. Um, people always raise their hand and say, well, what if it's exactly 150? If you are exactly 150 years old, congratulations. Happy birthday. This tells us that the negation of a for all statement, uh, sorry, the negation of a there exists statement is a for all statement. So this is how you negate existential statements. They become for all statements. This gives us a new proof technique. If you want to prove an existential statement, there exists an X in a set A with some property, you must show that there is at least one X in that set A that has the property P of X. So note, yes, one example is enough to prove an existential statement. I know that it feels a little bit strange because proofs tend to feel like they should be long and they should have a lot of algebra in them. But if you're trying to prove that something exists, it's enough to just find one. Sometimes you might have to work to show that the thing you found actually has the property P of X, but a proof amounts in that case just to finding one. Similarly, if you're trying to prove that an existential, the negation of an existential quantifier, existential statement, then you need to show that all X and A don't have the property P of X. With these four proof techniques, we now know how to prove for all statements and there exists statements. If something is a for all statement, you have to show that everything has the property. If it's an existential statement, you have to show that there is at least one thing that has the property. In the next video, we'll look at how to negate uh, more complicated sentences that involve uh, quantifiers. Thank you very much.